My name is Miles Bussenden. I am a father, a husband, a brother, a businessman, an actor. And on my journey, I came across a key to loving the life you live. Now, about 12 years ago, I decided to pursue my childhood dream of becoming an actor. This is after walking away from a once thriving business that went bankrupt during the recession. Now, when I say walk away, eh, that, that wouldn't have been so bad. I didn't exactly walk away. <laughs> you know, my wife wasn't exactly thrilled because she worked with me, and so we had no income, <laughs> right? Now, now, money ain't everything, but you know, it ranks right up there like next to breathing. But, but she said, you know, if, if, if you can find a way to get some income and pursue your dream, you know, um, then she can rock with me. So we took that leap of faith together. And um, so I had to figure out how I'm going to make this thing work. Now, I'm a simple guy, so I needed a simple plan. I discovered that I loved acting. I had a passion for it, and I had a gift for it. So, but I was fortunate. Because I got, um, I got a job as a core standard at Tyler Perry Studios. Now, Tyler, Medea, Tyler Perry plays Medea, and she's crazy as hell. But Tyler Perry can run a studio like nobody's business. He run that thing like a well-oiled machine. So I started working over at Tyler Perry Studios, and um, I learned a lot there being a standard. I was standing does the job of the actor. When the actor's getting their hair and makeup and wardrobe done, the stand-in is down there with the cameraman and the lighting people making sure that everything is, is right and, and so when it's time to film, we, we, we're good to go. And I would do that thing like it was, you know, like as if I was the actor. I would memorize all the lines and I would go through all this stuff. Now, we had long hours. We, we were working 12 hours plus a day. I think it was like $125 a day uh, back then. And, um, you know, getting up 5 o'clock in the morning. But I got to tell you, though, it didn't seem hard. It's something about when you're, like, pursuing. I was in hot pursuit of that dream. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just didn't seem hard. It didn't seem like a problem. I didn't mind getting up. I didn't mind going and doing what I had to do um, to get there. So I'm there just doing what I have to do. And to the point where when I got my first TV show as a professional actor on a show called Army Wives, it was not hard. It was easy. It was like a walk in the park for me, to be honest with you. But, you know, I happen to be in the right place, at the right time, with the right skills, and the right life experiences. So from there, I started getting gigs, you know, here and there, you know, get picking up some gigs. And I'm closer to the dream. Still, still broke. <laughs> still broke, but closer to the dream. So I got a call one day. Um, I got a call, and I was a casting director, and there was a this superstar in town, and they were filming this movie. They were looking for an actor to be a stand-in for this star because when he's, when, he's, uh, when he's not on camera, many times that stand-in would be facing off with these other cast members. I knew it was a great opportunity to you know, meet these folks, and the, and the, the, the director of that was, a, was also an Academy Award winning director, and it was a lot of big wigs on part of this project. So I said, well, I'm gonna at least go down, kick the tires, let me go talk to these folks. So I went down to the studio, and I went to meet with them. And I'm standing there. Uh, they have a bunch of lights like how they have now. And they had a camera like they have now. And um, me and this star is there. We're talking. We both happen to be from New York. So we, we, we're getting along pretty good. I went and met with his hair and makeup people. I went and uh, met with uh, a, a couple other folks out there. And I went on home. On my way home, I gave a call to my mentor. I said, hey, man. Um, I just had this great opportunity. I met with Denzel and Robert Zemeckis, man, and you know it was great, man. And um, you know I'll be able to do these things uh, and work with um, with these other actors. John Goodman is part of it, and and and, and Don Cheadle and, and Melissa Leo. And he said, uh, "Well, don't you aren't you working? Um, aren't you uh, one of the leads on a film you're doing now?" I said, well, "Yeah, it was a little independent film." I said, "Yeah, but we 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 only shooting you know that between Thursdays and Sundays." And he said, "Man, you you." You got to decide if you're an actor or a stand-in, brother. So I was like, wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, but then he said, you know what? But if you can do both, there's something to be gained by doing both. 
You should do it. I said, okay. Little after that, I got a call. Uh, they wanted they, they offered me the job. They, they said, hey, can you start Friday? I called up my guys, the, the producers for the independent film. I said, hey, guys, I got this great opportunity. You know, I want to be working with Denzel and all these stars. And, you know, Robert Zemeckis, he's a guy that did Forrest Gump, you know? And, uh, you know, so I got this great opportunity, man. And they were excited for me. They said, man, that sounds great. I said, hey, would you guys mind if I can do my scenes on Saturdays and Sundays so that I'll be available to do, to work with Denzel and these guys during the week? And they were like, man, no. <laughs> that we, we need you when, when, when we need you. We can't do that. Now, I was under contract. It was only $150 a day, but I still was under contract. So I had to honor the contract. So I go, I call back up, you know, uh, Denzel's people like, hey, man, I'm really sorry, guys, you know, but I, I, I'm not available. I, I can't do it. They got back to me and said, you know, um, we were able to change some things around. Can you come on Monday? I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I come on Monday. You know, I, I knew I had some potential conflicts down the line for those Thursday, Friday issues, but, but yeah, I come Monday. So that was a, a, just an amazing thing. And then when I, um, when I, went up, when I, when I end up finished that film, because I only had a few more weeks left, like uh, three, four weeks, when I finished that, they felt like, well, you know, we need to make sure we have Miles available all the time. So you had an Academy Award winning producer, an Academy Award winning director, go to an Academy Award winning actor to ask if I can also be his stunt double. Now Denzel already had a stunt double that he worked with for years. And Miles ain't never do no stunts. <laughs> Miles did stunts one time in Bulgaria. I was playing this uh, runaway slave in the Tom Sawyer and I jumped in a river in Bulgaria somewhere. That's the only stunt I ever did. But Denzel said yes. So they put me under contract. I got to get a little fancy trail like the fancy actors and stuff. And um, I went from making $125 a day to seven to $10,000 a week. Just like that. By the end of the shoot, it was the last day, uh, Denzel leaned into me, he said, uh, you got a master class. I felt like the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got a master class in acting. Yeah, and in that moment, I knew that I was ready for real to go and distribute my gift to the marketplace. You had people in the industry that looked down on stand-ins. So in the local market where I was, there was, a, there was a several industry professionals that knew that I did standing work. So they looked down that it was a, it's like a status imbalance. You got to be careful with status. You know, you know, so people up here and you down there, you don't get no respect. And they can't see you for who you are. But that forced me to go out to the, to the north, the east, the south, and the west. Because it... it if I, I knew if I can get five casting directors to love my work, then I could have a career. Sometimes you gotta realize that you have to expand your territory because if you stay in the area of familiarity, if I stayed in the area of familiarity, I would have never reached my goal. I would have never become that actor because those people, and I, don't have, I used to be mad, but I ain't mad no more. But at, <laughs> At one time, I was mad, and I, but, but you know what? They're the ones that made me go out, but they never, even to this day, they never hired me. Now, I've worked with Academy Award winning actors, A-list actors, Emmy Award winning actors, but they still haven't hired me, those, those people. So sometimes, you gotta go out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go. Go and seek elsewhere, man. If people ask me, you know, if people tell me why I inspired them, like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know since when I became inspirational, but something they found inspirational. And I said, okay, well, I, when I had to come do this, I had to figure out when is it that everybody start saying I inspire them all the time? And it was just when I started pursuing the dream. When I started pursuing, when I started going after it, not, not, not when I started accomplishing it, not when I worked with, with, with The Rock or this or that, but it wasn't that. It was just when I started pursuing it. And they started seeing any kind of progress, they, people was inspired. And it just inspires other people, it inspires me, it inspires them. Now, um, let me bring this thing on home. 
I got, I'm out there on the grind auditioning, because now I'm auditioning for big stuff, and I'm auditioning for, to be a, a regular on TV shows during pilot season. And I'm out there doing this, and um, I got a call that one of the auditions I had, uh, they, they were looking at me, and they wanted me to come test for this show called Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. And um, to make a long story short, I got the role. Now, becoming a series regular on a, on a, on a TV show is a big deal, especially a Marvel TV show, you know, um, for an actor. That's one of the things we aspire to. So I'm out there, and I'm in New Orleans because we're shooting this pilot, and I can't tell anybody because with Marvel, everything is a secret. So I can't tell anybody. Only my wife knows and my agent knows. And I get a call from the head of television uh, for Marvel. Uh, Jeff calls and said, hey, man, um, he wanted me to come to dinner with uh, some of the Disney executives and, and uh, some of the cast members. So I said, I said hey, Jeff, man, I got to tell you, man, um, this thing feels surreal. My head is kind of spinning, man. This, you know, what's happening? And Jeff said, hey, man, um, Miles, this is an opportunity to do your best work. He said, I'm going to tell you three things that will change your life. Welcome to Marvel. <laughs> so, you know, it was, um, it was interesting. But here's the thing. I, I, I think he was right that it changed my life, but not in the way that he meant it. Um, I'm in New Orleans, and I'm living in a condo in the, in the French Quarter. And I love it. I got a roof, uh, rooftop pool. You know, uh, I got the, the valet parking with all these fancy, fancy cars out there. I'm going to work on a show that I love. It's a Marvel Disney show. It's, um, I, I, I love the people I'm working with. One day, one, me and one of my castmates, we went to the supermarket, and um, one of the things I bought was a bar of soap. I mean, I love the way this thing smelled. It was made by somebody locally out there in New Orleans. I love how this thing smelled. And when I use it, it just made me want to take more showers. Now, I know it ain't a big deal to y'all, but my wife thought this was a breakthrough. <laughs> anyway, man, you know, um, I, want you to, uh, I want you to imagine with me. Just go with me for a second. If you could, just close your eyes for a second. Now, imagine that you're in bed. It's a comfortable bed, real comfortable. Your head is sitting in that pillow just the way you like it. It feels soft and good on your skin. And it's time to get up. And when you get up, you can't wait to get into the shower because you love that soap and how it makes <laughs> lathers up. <laughs> and it makes your skin feel and the way it smells. You love it. Then when you leave there, you can't wait to get to work because you love what you do. You love the people that you're working with. Then when you get off work, you can't wait to get home to that person that you love to talk about your day and find out how their day went and so on and so on. You heard a lot here today. I want to challenge you to begin your life of discovery. Discover those things that you love. Discover what you love to do. Because if you live the life you love, eventually, no. Inevitably, you will love the life you live. I'm Miles Mussenden.